Hey everyone, welcome to another episode of Fish Door County TV. Well, it's a beautiful day, a little before Christmas time, but as you can tell from over my shoulder, we still have no ice yet available in the Sturgeon Bay area. So it'll be a little while before we get out and do some ice fishing. But when we do, one of the most popular species to target will be the whitefish. And that's what we're going to talk about today. A few weeks ago, I got a chance to go out with Scott Hansen, Tim Kreff, and a few of the other guys from the Wisconsin DNR to check gill mesh nets out on Lake Michigan for whitefish. Now we got to see some cool footage of how this process works, how these guys use the information they get from these fish to determine the populations and the health of the whitefish fishery out in the lake and the bay. And we also got some good information from Scott on what's happening that's creating such a great overall ice fishery for these whitefish. Stay tuned guys, we'll be back in about one minute. Today we're going to head out onto, uh, onto the lake to uh, conduct our annual Lake Whitefish Spawning Survey. Um, it takes place off of uh, near the Bailey's Harbor Jacksonport area out in a, a reef structure that we've surveyed annually for the better part of a couple decades anyway now. And the idea is to go out there and take a look in during the November spawning period what, what the, uh, the condition of the fish is at this time of the year. Um, how many fish, it's an index survey, so we get a general idea of, of population, and it, but it also tells us a lot about the condition of the fish, what the growth has been like over the last uh, X number of years, however old the fish are, um, what stage they are uh, as far as the spawning condition um, for this, this time of, of November, and uh, just kind of the overall health of, of the uh, Lake Whitefish uh, spawning population, which is our kind of the North Moonlight Bay area of Door County, which is the backbone of, of our uh, Lake Whitefish uh, stock, so to speak, in Wisconsin waters. So we'll go out there and set some graded mesh. Um, the the uh, size of the mesh, the gill net, range, uh, ranges from three to five and a half, three inch to five and a half inches um, in half inch increments. So we get a, a general idea of the overall spectrum of the, of the size distribution in the population. Um, doesn't tell us as much about the younger fish, the, the non-spawners, but tells us what how the, the spawning fish are coming back and, and what recruitment has been like, how many, how many good year classes we have out there. During the survey, we're, we're lifting graded mesh gill nets, so we'll, and, a, and a typical lift with depending on the weather conditions and how we have to approach the net, we'll come up to the buoy and uh, lift the buoy in through the doors here into the boat and the buoy will be lifted in and pulled through and that's of course connected to, to the gill net. So there's buoys uh, and anchors on either end of, of a long uh, strand of gill net here. The, the gill nets themselves are approximately 1,200 feet per box and that's how we kind of categorize them as boxes of, of net. And typically we will set anywhere from 1,200 to 36, 4,800 feet of gill net out here. And sometimes we'll string two boxes of gill net together. And again, each box is, is graded mesh, so different size mesh within there. So we'll lift it into the boat. Um, the net itself will be fed onto this, this gill net lifter. And the lifter has a series of teeth and, and the, the net itself, um, the, the, the twine on the top and the bottom is fed into the, the lifter and it essentially just pulls it through this, this hydraulic process, lifts it into the boat for us, and feeds it along the picking station here, the picking table, where uh, the individuals here are stationed. And the bottom line is we pick the fish out of the net. These fish are gilled, 
So they'll either get caught, um, they'll either get wedged in the net or they'll get gilled. Their gill plates will get caught into the net as they try to back out. So the process here is just trying to get them untangled and picked out of the net so that, um, and then we box the fish and take them back later to be processed. And the net itself then gets boxed at the end of the, the picking table and it's, it's very critical that the, the net gets boxed properly and gets real clean when it goes back in because if and when we have to reset this net, we want to make sure that it feeds out properly when we're setting the net uh, for our next survey. So I could speak a little bit to what's going on in Green Bay as far as Lake Whitefish um, in that we, you know, folks may have noticed uh, that we're catching a lot of Lake Whitefish through the ice in, in Green Bay these days. Um, that happened somewhere around 2007, 2008 uh, during those winter periods. Um, they started to show up before that. Lake Whitefish harvest in the, in the creel during the ice fishery or the open water fishery was, was very infrequent to rare. They just weren't caught that, that often. And this really came out of nowhere, and it was, it was a very impressive sight. And, to, and, and these days, there is no other place, to my knowledge, on Lake Michigan where Lake Whitefish can be harvested by the hook and line angler uh, like this on, on Lake Michigan. The catch rates here are very good. Um, so it's, it's a pretty neat phenomenon, something we're very fortunate to have. Um, possible explanations are a different um, distribution of the fish. As we talked about, invasive species have really changed the habits of Lake Whitefish in Green Bay over the years, or in Lake Michigan over the years. And so some of the fish may be frequenting Green Bay more so than they, during the winter months, more so than they have historically. But they've always been there. Uh, the commercial fishermen know that. How, and, or also, it could be just a, a reason of what's going on again in the Menominee River, whereas 100 years ago there was a big run there, it, it disappeared, it started back up again 10 to 15 years ago. And what we think is going on in there is there's some very, has been some very good um, year classes come out of the Menominee River as well as potentially some of the other tributaries in Green Bay. And those fish are, are, are very well possibly contributing to this sport fishery. In, in fact, we tagged about 2,500 lake whitefish in the Menominee River in 2010 uh, during the, the November spawning period and a lot of those fish were recovered by ice fishing anglers uh, over the course of the next two years, especially the first year after we tagged them when we had decent ice conditions out there. We got quite a few of them so th that type of information is suggests that those fish are hanging around in Green Bay, not necessarily moving out to Lake Michigan proper. In fact, I haven't gotten a tag recovery from those Menominee River fish outside of Green Bay. They've all come in Green Bay proper, whether it's from the sport or the commercial fisheries. Those fish may be hanging around and may be a reason why, why they're available to anglers right now. So uh, once we're done picking the fish, we're coming up on the commercial fishing dock and we're, we're utilizing one of the commercial fishing docks here to offload our catch. Uh, so we'll take the boxes off and then take them actually back to one of the, the processing stations here uh, in the Northern Door County area 
And here we um, essentially do the biology uh, of the fish. We'll collect basic bio data that gives us an, an indication of the health of the, of the spawning stock out here. And by that I mean taking length and weight information from each individual fish. Um, we look at the spawning, we determine whether it's a male or female, look at the overall health, look for things like sea lamprey marks, for example, um, real important information that we collect from the fish. Um, look at the gonadal development, whether if it's a male or a female. Um, for some studies, we'll actually take the eggs out and look at fecundity estimates, which is just an estimate of the number of eggs that an average fish, an average female fish is producing. And then we also take age structures from these fish. And these fish of this size will typically take the otolith, which is the ear bone, uh, located kind of up um, in front of the eyes and in the, in the, the dorsal portion of the head. And that ear stone is a calcified structure that can be cross-sectioned and is very similar to, to reading tree ring, like reading rings on a tree. So we count the number of rings there and we tell how old that fish is so we know how strong the ear classes are. It also gives us an idea of how fast those fish or slow those fish are, are growing. And that's very important now because the growth has slowed so much um, in Lake Michigan fish that we're, we're concerned about you know, the number of fish and, and the actual size of fish that are out there and, and how well they're growing, how well they're recruiting to the fishery and, and how slow that process is. We also may take a scale sample from those fish. If it's a smaller fish, we can use scales and, and essentially we're looking at the same thing, looking at the calcified structures and, and the tree rings, so to speak. Uh, so that's the basic kind of biological data we, we collect and that goes into our overall population model so that we can calculate a safe harvest level for the commercial fishery. So today was a, was a really good lift. Um, we ended up with I think a little over 1,500 pounds worth of fish in about, I believe it was 4,800 feet of net. Um, that was uh, roughly 500 fish total. So, you know, if you, you ballpark it somewhere around a three pound average or so per fish, so they're really nice condition to fish. And, and it, was a, it was a really good lift, especially for being a little bit later in November when we were probably on the downswing of, of the overall spawn. So the overall population of white whitefish for us fortunately is pretty good these days, numbers wise. Talked about the condition is down, the size at age is down considerably, but numbers wise we've had some pretty good recruitment events. Uh, so I think as far as the commercial and the sport fisheries, I think at least in the near future um, things should be okay. Should, however, I have seen with, with respect to the, the North Moonlight Bay population on Lake Michigan proper, I haven't seen a lot of, of year classes come into, in, into the population as far as the, the smaller fish that might have been caught in our smaller gillnet mesh. So I'm a little bit concerned. We won't know again until this winter exactly how the age distribution is, but we, the recruitment may not be so great there. However, on Green Bay, um, in the last five to 10 years, there have been some pretty strong year classes and there are some, a fair number of smaller fish out there that should bode well for the near future. Um, and hopefully um, we can continue to have some good year classes in the up upcoming years to continue the good fishery that we've got. Well guys, another great show and I really hope you enjoyed it. Special thanks to Scott Hansen, the Wisconsin Department of Natural Resources, and all the guys on the Corgonis that day that really helped put this show together. It seems like our whitefish populations are in real good shape. We've got some great fishing seasons ahead. And with the guys that we got running the program, the future really looks bright for this species. Thanks again, guys, for watching, and we'll see you soon for another episode of Fishburg County TV.